today I'm going to create a first flange and a hem surface manually. This is the good old fashioned way. It's very reliable, it's a very parametric, easy to create once you understand the concepts. So here is my surface that needs to have the trims put on for gaps and such. And then the first flange is built off of that and then from the first flange is the hem. When I get into creating my initial slab surfaces, I want to build everything back to the base element or as far back as I can to the base element. So you'll notice I have this blend. This blend is a combination of these two slabs. So what I want to do is I want to create my trim surfaces based off of curves projected onto those surfaces. Now some people like drawing curves directly on surfaces and every once in a blue moon I do the same but a lot of times when you're creating your trims it's much easier to create your curves on a plane and simply project them or extrude and intersect those back to the primary surfaces. So in this case that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take these curves and create a geometrical set Call it frame, and let me go to properties, change the color. We'll make our curves blue. We'll make our surfaces. There we go, beige. So first things first, projection. I'm going to project this curve along a direction to this support and the Z is my direction. I'm going to do the same thing with the same curve to this surface in the Z direction and select OK. I'm going to project this curve to this surface in the X direction and same thing for this curve to this surface in the X direction. So that gives me my basic frame to lay out my surfaces. Now that I have my projections, I'm just going to go ahead and hide these trim lines. Next thing I need to do is create my slabs for my hem. So I'll just create another geometrical set. This is just how I like to work. And for this, I'm going to use sweep with a draft direction. So the draft direction is going to be for this top curve Z. I want to make sure it's open to draft and I want to extend this out in both directions. I'll make it big, bigger than it necessarily has to be just so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Okay so this is my big surface. Next, I need to do the same for this curve in the X direction. Open to draft. This curve, X direction. And I need to make sure once again that this remains open to the draft. And this one. Open. Now that I have my slabs in, again, these are just my basic slabs. I'm going to make my fillets on my slabs and my blends. Now, before I actually make my fillets, let me go ahead and hide these elements. What I need to do is I need to create a blend, a transition between this surface and this surface. And the way I like to do that, there's a, there's a few ways you can do that. But uh, one of the things that I like to do, let me go over to frame, define and work object, is I like to use existing references to make sure I get as clean a, uh, a surface blend between these. So for this, I'm just going to simply create a couple of intersections. I'm going to intersect this edge with this curve. The same thing for this this edge to this curve. 
Now that I have that in there, I can draw in my lines that I need to create my blend surf between here and here. So first things first, I'm going to project this point to this edge using a normal direction. And I'll do the same thing with this point to this inside edge, normal direction. And then take a look. Make sure that this isn't such an exaggerated shape, something that's going to easily blend out to this one over here. And the next thing I'm going to do is same basic process. I'm going to take this point out to this edge, this point down to this edge, select OK. Now that I have my uh, points in, I can draw in my curves. In this case, just a couple of basic lines from point to point on the surface. And same thing, point to point on this surface. I'm going to go back into slabs, define and work object, and I'm going to create my blend. We'll go from this element to this slab, this element. Let's see here. Line four. Did I put this on the surface? Let me make sure. I thought I picked a support. I apologize. Let me make sure that's on the support. And same thing for this one. That one has a support I may have mispicked. So I'll go back in there. I'll apply my blend. This to here. This to here. And this is one of those rare instances that I trim everything up. Uh, changes the curvature. Curvature, select OK. And that gives me a nice transition through that bend. Now that I have that in there, I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and hide all of these elements. Don't need to see them now. So you can see I have a nice transition through the blend. Here I'm going to go ahead and create a couple of more fillets. I want to fillet this to this and go 0.6 preview and this is looking pretty good. Again you're going to get this information from a stylist. I'm going to do the same thing with this to this wrong direction, wrong direction, there we go. And there is my, basically that's my slab for my first flange. And because this is Katia and we like to label things, I'm gonna go ahead and label it. You may put this into a separate geometrical set. In this case, I'm just gonna leave it in here and change the color so we know exactly what it is. Now that I have my slab for my first flange, I need to think about how I'm going to create the hem. Now the hem is going to be uh, basically based off of this first flange, and it's going to come in and it's going to wrap around. So that hem thickness needs to be the thickness of the material times two, because it's top and bottom, and then the material of the thickness that's going inside of that hem. So for that, I'm going to, we'll just imagine the material is 40 thousandths, or one millimeter. So if it's one millimeter thick, I need to make sure that I have a three millimeter offset. Sometimes I use a little bit thinner material, like 0.711. It's just that times three, or maybe the inner piece of metal is going to be a little thicker or a little thinner. So you have to make sure you have all that information. You'll have a section defining how thick the metal is going to be in those areas. Next thing I need to do is I need to create an inside trim edge for that hem. The hem is only going to be so long. So this allows me to take my surface and offset it out to whatever trim edge length I need. Let's see. Here we go. Now that I have my trim edge in, 
I'm gonna go and insert geometrical set. I like to break things out. And oops, let me change the color of this for surfaces. Make it bluish, there we go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split this surface to that edge. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the trim function. I wanna trim this to this. Yes, I know you can pick multiple elements, but I'm a fan of going, in this case, to make things easy for this, trimming it all up. So here we have my first flange trimmed in to my base elements. The last thing I'm going to do for the lecture is I'm going to create the actual fillet. And for that we use a tritangent fillet. I want to go from this to this to this and select OK. Now that I've done my tritangent fillet you can see I have a nice pipe that runs all the way up and through. Pretty clean, pretty simple. And this is fairly representative of what the final product is going to look like on your car. Now, there are times, <clears throat> excuse me, there are times where you may need a flat spot. If you do need a flat spot, you would just simply put in two separate fillets and of a, of a smaller radius size than the three, a three millimeter offset, like two, two and a half, whatever that may be, and create that little flat spot in the middle. But for this, this is what we want. And that's how you put in your first flange and your hem.